Howdy, Buffalo Bart here, and welcome. Alright, uh, I want to cover this really quickly, and, well, it's about setting up cars with Cindy Studios uh, vehicles to be drivable, and the basics of getting them operational. Uh, not really super complicated, but there are some things that you have to take a look at whenever you're getting it set up that can be kind of a pitfall and what you can run into. So, opening up a brand new project here, it's based off my simple multiplayer template, which is still available from me via PayPal, uh, $20 US PayPal, and yeah, you can get that. <clears throat> but with setting up the cars with City Studios vehicles, one of the things that I found that I'm loading up this project and it's going to have already the uh, the Polygon City pack and then I'll bring in uh, another asset pack to kind of show you what some of the pitfalls are. So as soon as this loads up we'll, we'll go ahead and um, I'll show you the basics of getting set up with doing uh, a project like this. It's not super complicated but it can be if you let it. And with the naming convention is one of the things that um, is going to be a pitfall. And not the classic 80s game. So, um, see Polygon City and what we're going to be using inside the mesh. Vehicles rigged. We have ambulance and a bunch of different cars. What I'm going to do is for shits and grins, I am going to... Go ahead and add new, features or content pack, and I'm going to add in the vehicle template. Now you could do this, the advanced, or vehicle advanced, and I'm going to do it as well, but to get started with, I'm just going to use the vehicle. The advanced one is going to be problematic for just quickly getting them operational. So let's start off with the vehicle template. We'll add that in, and it's done. What you're going to run into is, in this, the sedan, you got two folders that it creates. You've got your mesh, which doesn't really have anything to do with the car itself. But inside the sedan folder under vehicle, you've got uh, animation blueprint. And if you look at that, can man, open up. And, uh, Unreal Engine 4, you pissed me off so much. Editor preferences. main window, loading and saving, disable autosave, thank you, go away. Alright, so this is all it is that you're going to find inside the animation blueprint. That's it. I mean, if you look at the uh, event graph, there's nothing. There's only, inside the animation um, graph or anim graph, you've got mesh space, reference pose, wheel handler, component to local, and that this is all you're going to have in that animation blueprint and that's fine so if you look at the sedan skeleton and look at the actual skeleton tree this is where you're going to notice the naming convention that i'm talking about you've got the the root you got the vehicle base which is the vehicle portion itself you've got the wheel front left front right rear right rear left we're going to need to look at these for our naming convention of how they are named. So let's actually go into the vehicles rigged and start off with a popular one, the um, muscle car. Okay, cool car, love it. Look at the naming convention here. You have plates. Why? It's in the center. Don't understand that. Steering wheel useful if you're wanting to attach your character to the steering wheel so that their hands go to it that's something for later down the line glass we're not going to need but wheel rl as opposed to wheel uh, rear left rl in this is going to be rear left rear right front left front right so the naming convention is different. Wheel underscore RL is actually going to be wheel underscore rear underscore left. It's that naming convention that we're going to run into an issue with. So I'm going to go ahead and close both of those down for now. The next thing we want to look at is our vehicle blueprint itself. 
Okay, vehicle game mode, vehicle HUD, sedan, and there is our blueprint. And I'll open it up, we'll look at it, but we're not going to edit this one. We're going to make a copy of it and edit the copy. So you're going to have um, all your different things here, your handbrake input, your update, uh, throttle input, toggle camera, default camera, that kind of stuff. You don't need all this extra stuff right here, we're not going to worry about looking at right now. If we look at our viewport, we see we have our car, we have a camera here, a camera here, and we have some text that you'll see here. Alright, so I'm actually going to go ahead and close that, and then we're going to go ahead and, and make another version of that. And just to make it simple, I'm going to go to my Characters folder, Blueprints, and this is where we're going to move it to. So I'm going to grab that Blueprint for Sedan. Left click, drag it over here, drop it in there, and copy. And I'm going to hit F2, rename this to our player, or not a spell, player car. So this is going to be our car that we're going to actually drive. And we got all this cool stuff here. Um, let's look at our viewport. Well, first off, we don't want that car. So let's actually go to, we have a map that we got with this. So let's go to the vehicle example map and we'll have a driving service we can look at. Now before I change anything over here in world settings, if I hit play, it's going to work, but I'm going to have a mouse cursor, which I hate. But now we can actually drive around. You can see the wheel is turning, moves left and right, and it is actually rotating. Looks like crap, but it's working. You see to the right, you see the kilometers and gear. If we hit the tab key, we can go to the interior. We can still look around with our mouse. And the orientation of how you move your mouse is inverted for up and down, which I don't like. But you can see the speed on the dash. You can see what gear you're in, that kind of stuff. You can see you got lean. It is really herky-jerky and not great in general. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually go back over here to the vehicle that's already in here, we're going to change that. We're going to get rid of it completely. So we don't want it. Now if we hit play, it's still going to give us that. But you can see, there we go. Let's change in our world settings. And we'll go over here from default pawn. We're going to change that to our player car. And if we hit play, it's still going to work. We have that stupid mouse cursor, but whatever. We don't have the stuff to the right of it. And if I hit tab, we still see it on the dashboard. Everything else works. But we don't see the stuff floating in the air anymore. So what we want to do is... God, the, the control of this is horrible. We want to change the car. So if I just say, okay, that. I can just change the skeletal mesh. And what if I change the skeletal mesh over to the muscle car? Well, there it is right there. That's got to work, right? What's going to happen is whenever I go in here to play, you can see the car kind of flips at a weird angle. And then when I try to drive it, it's just not working. I, I can go forward. And, yeah, I try to go backwards. It's just not doing anything. It's not going to work because we have a few issues. We don't have the appropriate skeleton and everything we need for that. So what I'm going to do is, in my, my character folder, I'm going to go ahead and do my usual animations. And I need to do in here. Now, if I go to the vehicle movement, and you can try to scroll through here and try to figure out where it is, and it's right here in the wheel setups, if you hit this arrow, you got four members here, you open up that, and open up all of them, 0, 1, 2, and 3. As you can see, right here on the right, it is referring to the bone name, wheel, underscore, front, underscore, left. That is not correct. So let's actually go ahead and first off, let's get our anim animation blueprint for our sedan. And I am going to right-click, retarget animation, 
If I try to do this, nothing is going to pop up here. I got nothing to work with. So what I want to do here is I want to create a rig because I have no rig. If you're doing characters, your regular skeletons, you've got uh, a humanoid rig. Well, we don't have a car rig. So I'm going to create this rig here and it's going to incorporate sedan, skeletal mesh, vehicle base, and this naming convention for all that. And I'm just going to hit OK. And it's called Sedan Skeletal Rig. Go ahead and save that. And now if I go in here and go to my Retargeting Manager, if you don't have that, just click right up here for Retargeting Manager. Select Rig and see we can't use a humanoid rig because it's not a humanoid. So now we have our Sedan Skeleton Rig. And then we're just going to hit Save. Okay. Next, we want to go to our vehicles rigged. And I'm going to go into my muscle car skeleton. Same thing, retargeting manager, set up rig to sedan. And then I'm going to hit save. Now, when I go back to my. I get to the right damn folder retarget that the animation blueprint now I can select that the muscle car nothing is showing up here okay so what's happened is let's go back to our, our rig here to our skeleton click apply to asset I don't know why that's like that but you're gonna have to go back in there and click that and hit save now when we go back in here and Retarget the sedan animation blueprint. I'm sure you know all the pitfalls along the way here. We select it, and now we can see the car is absolutely screwed all to hell and back. So we'll try to fix that. This is something recent. I haven't had this happen before. <laughs> but we'll figure it out. And let's go ahead and hit retarget. A lot of it has to do with that naming convention. So if I hit this and look in here now and we go into our atom graph, all that should be fine. Now go to our player car. We're going to have to go to our mesh animation class. And I did not rename the damn thing. I blame you for that. Um, I don't know if that's the right one or not. So let's actually rename that one. Car underscore anim BP. So if we go back in here now, we'll have one we can recognize. Hit compile and save. Will it work now? Nope, it's still screwed up because we need to fix the names in here now. So we go back to our vehicle movement and in our wheel setup. We're going to have to fix the bone name here, 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 well, all four of these on the bone name. And if you don't remember how they were done, then you could always come down here to your actual sedan uh, skeleton. And you see that right there. We don't want those names because those are already in here. So we need the one from our vehicle rigged muscle car. We want our wheel underscore RL. Now you can just remember how it's done capital W, everything else, lowercase. Or you can actually right click on it and copy selected bone names. And then come in here, that's RL, so that will be here. And then Control V, and it will paste that. We know this is rear right, so just change that to rear right. This is front right, so it'll be FR. This is front left. 
FL. So we got front left, front right, rear left, rear right, hit compile, hit save, and now what happens if we go in here and play? We can see the wheel is turning left and right, they're spinning, and we are driving. Awesome. It's still crappy, but hey, at least we're driving and we got it going. There's a lot of things you're going to want to change on the, the vehicle configuration, which I have not taken the time to actually learn. And I'm dead. Okay. So that's good. Um, let's make sure we hit save all. Everything's good. Now, what you're going to run into is if I go into the police car. Thankfully, these four, wheel, underscore, FL, FR, RL, RR, these are all going to be the ones that matter. And those are just fine. So if I come over here to Retargeting Manager and I tell it to use the sedan rig and hit Save and Close. Now if I go back to my Vehicle Blueprint, Player Car, what should be good to go here is if I go to my viewport select my mesh there's other things you're gonna to want to do you might want to fix your your player in into your camera that kind of stuff but if I change the vehicle now um, and don't change the animation blueprint all right so I was looking at my mesh again it's changed the animation class to none if I just tell it to use that animation class again, it's probably not going to work correctly, but yeah, so we're not going to be able to use our animation blueprint. We're going to have to create an animation blueprint for each and every vehicle so that we can get the wheels to turn. Um, a way to resolve that issue is, let's go back in here and change this back to the muscle car because we know it works and everything's good on that. A way you can try to resolve that issue is you go into the Cindy Studios Asset Pack and go into, we've already retargeted to this skeleton here. Okay, we know the skeleton's good to go. You can actually come in here and I would say probably, you can't rename that, you can't rename that, you can't rename any of these, which really sucks. If you could come in here and actually do the renaming on that and that and that to just a generic SM underscore vehicle underscore mesh and um, right here vehicle underscore glass vehicle underscore plates get rid of car muscle and you know remove this and rename that to something different that would be nice but since you cannot um, the police car is gonna be the same you've got the car but you notice how it's different you don't have a root here the root here is gonna be that the glass and the plates are just underneath the root only versus the muscle car you got this well, they're all underneath the root, sorry. Um, yeah, the sedan was different, but we've retargeted to this one. Steering wheel, plates, see, steering, W, that's fine. If this was the same across all of them, it would be no problem. But since we cannot rename, let's see, that, that's fine for steering wheel, this, and this, and this, we're going to run into problems. the way you could probably get around it is probably the, the the least favorable way of doing this I'm gonna delete this project here shortly anyway but if I select the ambulance skeleton let's take a look at that one is it gonna be the same yeah pretty much but you've got a few extra things here um, doors so you have to decide if you want 
drivable versions of these, you're going to have to either create an animation blueprint that's retargeted to every single solitary vehicle that you want to use separately, or you're going to have to take all of these skeletons and do like I've done with the characters. And a quick example on the characters. Um, do this um, people just so we know it's different uh, when you're retargeting and I'm going to go to the world settings here and I'm going to change the vehicle game mode to third person game mode and go to here and play so if I want to get rid of this character right here and use the Cindy Studios character to run around with instead of this guy the way that I always do it is I come in here and I create another folder called mesh and I go to the Cine Studios characters, and in this pack, all the characters are already set up to one skeletal rig. Okay, that's awesome. Here's the thing: 99% of all of the player characters in the Cine Studios assets, not just polygons, but even in simples, will work off this one common rig. So what I do is I grab this, and you could potentially do this for the cars. Don't really recommend it, but you could. So I drag this mesh over here, and I copy it into my new mesh folder. And then I rename that to... Um, uh, Cinti Skeleton whatever name it whatever I want and then I go into it retargeting manager it's already set to humanoid rig we're good to go and now what I'll have to do is I need to go to my mannequin that is my third person mannequin go into here and I need to tell it to use the humanoid rig and I need to change its pose to a T pose which I need to raise the upper arm up by 50 the lower arm down hmm. yeah we're gonna do that and we'll go back 30 we need to change so that he's an NT pose and another thing that I do is I take the hand and Raise it up by 10. Seems a little different. I used to do um, up 50, back 20. But, yeah, 10 looks better. Uh, lower arm back by 20. We want everything to be in a perfect t-pose so yeah back 30 that was right and lower arm down 10 used to do down by 20 but okay and up by 10 on here but that's fine you know I've got plenty of videos on, on how to actually redo this we'll do a modify pose use current pose and save so now whenever I go to the um, animation blueprint I can actually right click retarget and do that select my Cinti skeleton and you see there's nothing here so the next step I'm going to want to do here is go to my Cinti Studios characters grab the skeletal mesh for each one of them just the skeletal mesh don't need anything else and I'm going to right click and select assign skeleton and do that select my Cinti and I'm about to do this for each one I couldn't just do SM like I usually do I had to screw it up and make it in a way that I had to scroll down but you'll have to do this once for each one of those skeletal meshes but only takes a few moments to do so basically I'm reassigning the skeleton from all of my skeletal meshes to use this new skeleton that I said that I wanted to use. 
and then I can go into my new mesh when I open it up I can apply the asset and now I've locked this character in as my default for that so whenever I go in here to retarget the another quick note double click or whatever hit F2 copy the name right click and then duplicate we're going to select that. See, now we have a character here. We're going to replace, and then I'm going to control V. So now I can replace that third person animation BP with um, Senti uh, whatever, underscore ABP. And then I'm going to change, tell it what folder I want it to go to. We'll do emanations, people, okay, and retarget. So now with we'll save all, go back to my player base, which is my player character. Now I'm going to go to my viewport, select my mesh. I can change my character to the male police officer, and then animation class is going to be Sinti, and you notice that it screwed up my camera. So all I have to do is uncheck real time from here, select this camera. It will work, but I don't like it like that. I don't, it, it's, and I know why it is, is because the skeleton is just not right. Not saying the Unreal Engine, um, you know, has flaws or anything, but, you know, not saying that at all. I'm going to leave the arrows there until I can actually get the arrows right between the eyes. And that's close enough for me. And then I'll just move it to where you don't see the face. Compost and save. So that's fixed. And if we go back into our event graph, we don't have to change anything else. Everything should be good. Now if we go in here to play, we are home cheese. And by doing it that way, by configuring the skeleton, all of the skeletal meshes to use the same skeleton, I'm able to do this, go back into my player base, go to my mesh, and change to female police officer. Compost and save, and go in, and there we go. Everything works. So, it's when setting up the cars, um, that's the the issue you're going to run into. We'll do a vehicle game, player car. Is I can animate this one. Everything is just fine, but because of the naming convention on each of the individual models from City Studios, if you want to have each one separate, so that um, you can get the wheels to spin and you can see them turn when you're turning direction, the only way you're going to be able to do that is you can come in here, create a child blueprint, and we're going to call this cup underscore car. I go in here, scroll back, go to my mesh, change it over to police, and then we're going to need to go back to here, vehicles rigged, and go into this make sure that we're set to that, this, the, our new skeletal rig, which we did that a, little, a few minutes ago, and then go back into our animation blueprint for our sedan, right click, retarget, duplicate, police car, and because our frickin' rig lost itself, apply the asset, save, See, I blame you for that too. Um, there we go. Go back here, right click. Now, police car, and it looks all screwed up. But, um, let's go back in here again. Control C. Go back in here. We're going to replace that with um, cop. R underscore ABP. 
change the folder, go back to our characters, animations, that's where we had our other car, and then retarget. And you can see there it is. So we go back in here to our cop car, select our mesh again, select our animation class to cop car, compost, save, and change this to cop car and play. See our wheel turns and it's revolving and our tab still works. We'll have to change our text location so that it puts in the right location but but we've now that's the only way you're going to be able to do all the different vehicles separately is you're going to have to give them their own animation blueprint in this case it's relatively simple when it comes to tuning these cars so they drive better uh, good luck with that um, I've never really spent the time to work with it uh, but I did and I wanted to make sure that I could at least get them drivable because you know why have cars in here if you can't actually walk over and drive them So that's it. If you want, with all these assets, you're going to have to create that animation blueprint for each and every single solitary one of them. Now that you've got your, your own custom rig that was in the vehicle right here. Now, since I always forget how the hell to add sound, because that is really boring to have that vehicle we hear we have play let's go ahead and close the cop car and we're driving there's no engine sound and it's boring we want sound we'll do that really quickly add new because I always forget content we're gonna add vehicle advanced add a project it's done I'm gonna go into the blueprints folder vehicle blueprint and inside here we have an engine sound component so we know that that's something we're gonna have to add in but since we are doing this um, and I look at the blueprint folder dumbass the cop car is a child of the player car we can actually edit in the player car and it's going to work in the cop car so we'll add in a new component audio and I'm going to call this engine sound. I'll compost and save. So we'll look at this vehicle blueprint and we have engine sound it's using engine loop Q. So let's see if we can grab that one. It's probably going to be the only, well, you know, engine loop Q. So there we got that. Compile and save. Um, Allow spatialization. I don't think there's any attenuation set up for that. Yep, engine attenuation. Okay. Good enough. So, what we're going to look for in the vehicle blueprint is audio. We want this right here. And I'm just highlight all that. Control C. And it is coming off of the event tick and a sequence node. Um, we have an event tick right here so I can just paste that in, grab the event tick, move it over, drag out here and we'll do sequence. So we'll add that in here. We'll take this and plug it into right here and name is yep, engine sound right here we're going to go ahead and grab that and it seems to be already there well let's see what happens with that alright I don't know if you guys can hear it or not but we have an engine idle sound and now we have vehicle sounds. Cheap and cheaty, yes I know, but it works. And it's based off the engine RPM for the sound of the engine. Oh, the vehicle dynamics are terrible. 
So that's all we did, and that's all it is. is um, it gets a reference to the vehicle movement, get forward speed, um, it returns ABS, absolute positive value, and that goes into the float. And then it's a reference to the engine sound, set float parameter, RPM. So yeah, that, that's all it was. I could never remember that, so that's, that's how I quickly cheat and throw it in there. Get current gear, that's all part of the vehicle movement stuff. If you want to tweak the vehicle settings, you got your mechanical setup here and your steering setup. You've got engine setup, you can change your max RPM. Let's change this to 7,000. That's actually your top speed. Uh, differential setup, limited slip four wheel drive. You can change that to be open differential front drive. The difference between a limited slip and an open is in a locked, which we don't have the option for locked, but we have open or limited slip is what we have. An open differential means that uh, if you've ever driven a car and you try to spin the tires, we'll say, or you're in the, the mud and you're you're losing traction, the sadly, the, we the vehicle, bleh, the wheel that... Um, has the least resistance gets the most traction with a normal open differential so if it doesn't have any resistance it, there's nothing pushing against it sadly it gets all the freaking power so if you've got one axle and your axle twisted up and one's playing on the ground but the other one is sunk down or spinning free and doesn't or is, is you're articulating trying to climb rocks or whatever you just drive a lot of jeep stuff and going off-road so you'll have one tire that's still on the ground but one's hanging in the air sadly what you want to happen is the wheel that's still on the ground making contact with solid shit you want it to have traction but if you have an open differential sadly the one that's hanging in the air is going to be the one that's getting all the power and it's stupid it sucks it really does a limited slip differential will kind of eliminate that a little bit but not completely Whereas a locked axle, which is not an option that we have to work with, is so this would be a semi-locked axle is what a limited slip is. A locked axle means that you're going to be sending equal power to both tires. Don't matter if they're on the ground or in the air, they're getting equal power. Well, why don't you just have that all the frickin' time? Well, and that's simply because if you're turning both tires at the exact same speed, and now you turn a corner the wheel that's on the inside of the curve is going to be turning less revolutions to make that turn than the one that's on the outside trying to make up that same distance as you're turning you're going to be traveling a farther distance on the wheel on the outside edge of a turn so your wheels are then not going to be turning at the same speed as they're going around that corner and it's going to chew up your splines and tires and all kind of other bullshit. That's why you don't see um, people using lockers and making tight turns. It's because they can't. That's <laughs> why so people who drive Jeeps and stuff, what we'll do is we'll run the lockers as long as you're going in a straight line. If we may need to make a tight turn, we will disengage the locker so that our axles don't get bound up and damage our axles. So, yeah. But the vehicle movement... Yeah, I've not spent a hell of a lot of time setting these up. Your steering curve is one you definitely need to work on. And the mechanical setup, yeah, you're okay. Should be fine with that. Um, but you can tweak it however you want to. All I did was just turn up the um, the RPMs. Sadly in this, the RPM dictates your top speed. You can also change your acceleration factors. There's a lot of things you can tweak to make the vehicles drive better. Uh, I'm not going to go into all that. I just wanted to do this in this tutorial really quickly to show how you're going to be able to set up and how to set up the City Studios vehicles to be drivable with animations. And um, so you can see the steering wheel turn and the wheel spin at least. It gets you that far. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Um, I guess like this is like a so. Um, if you look at the details here, 
start tag. We could get really complex since I have three player starts here. Um, let's actually get rid of this. I don't want that. I put in my simple multiplayer's team template. And what I want to do here is let's close out some of the stuff here. Let's actually look at the map from the advanced vehicle because it's kind of cooler. Well, they're both kind of cool, but um, this one has more stuff in it. So what I'll do with this one is I'll change the world settings to vehicle game mode and the player car. And we need to make sure that we get rid of eh, that guy. The original vehicle blueprint. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like there is Yeah, there, there's a blocking volume on here already. Just wasn't sure on that. But um could actually make this into a just goof off multiplayer arena unfortunately um, I didn't set up anything for flipping the vehicle back over and that will be a problem um, so if I want this map here let's do save all save selected I will copy that. I'll go into my UI folder widgets main menu widget and my open level section right here if you've got this template um, that's all I'm doing is changing the map there and this is for the single player, the other most for the multiplayer um, now I can actually go in here and hmm. no what I'm gonna have to do is to be on the safe side we're gonna save all this stuff right here I'm gonna change that in just a second um, I'm actually going to and yes it does, does matter I'm going to, because I want to package this up and play it, make this available to download. Anybody else wants to jump in here and just screw off? Well, um, there's four player starts. That's good. We're going to file, save current as. I need to go to my maps folder, and I need to change this to be um, track underscore zero one save that and now when I go to my maps folder go to my maps folder thank you and I copy that go back into my UI folder and change that again in my main menu widget and and here Then go to my map folder, go to main menu map, I need to go to edit, project settings, I need to go to maps and modes, and that's fine, sorry, um, I need to go to packaging. Under packaging, select this arrow here, scroll down, list of maps to include in a packaged build we no longer need the lobby map so I'm going to click here on the there are three dots go to my maps folder and select my track underscore zero dot u map open and good so now I can do this play in standalone game this will simulate what it'll look like if you were to download this and play this if anybody cares enough to look at this and play this I'm going to do multiplayer. I'm going to host a game. 
or you know, someone select to find a game and click on Find Lobby, look to see if there's any games available. They'll show up here. Hey, look, somebody's got one, and they didn't give a name to it. You suck. The reason why you may find false games like this is because this is using a developer app ID of like 481, and that's fine. You can do this all day long. It's no problem. It'll look like to people on my Steam friends list that I'm playing a game called Space War. It's because it's a, a Steam app ID, a developer app ID. Whenever you want to publish this your game on Steam, you're going to have to get your own app ID or else you're going to end up with this. That's why you don't see a correct ping right here. There's no name because nobody put a name in here. Uh, if I try to join this, it's not going to join their game because it's not this game. Um, every developer out there that's developing something on the Steam platform, they're using that same developer app ID. So I'm going to host a game and I'm going to call this Beefalo Bard's Damn Car Game and hit make and what it'll do is boop, it'll spawn me into the game now I can drive around now if anybody wanted to join this game they could click on a join and they'll, they'll find Beefalo Bart's damn car game and they could join in and it'll be multiplayer we'll all be driving around in this muscle car yay and you can drive just like an ass like me um yeah, but of course there is no, oh no, the escape key is not working, so I have to alt tab out, do that, because in my character blueprint, what I do is I use the escape key, and I've created escape menu, so all I have to do is grab this from my player underscore base, and this is for people who have my template, um, and you, you want to use a different character, and you want to use my escape menu for right now, or you want to modify it or whatever later on, but to get my escape menu to work, just copy this whole section right here, just control C, and then go into player car, or whatever you want it for your other character, or your other um, blueprint, and just paste that in there, and compile and save, and now you can close those back out, and if I hit play now, it'll go back in there, and whenever I'm in the game, now if you're testing it in um, a selected viewport, if you hit escape, it's just going to end it. I like the escape key, it just seems like a generic, um, so I'm going to host, or, or you know, I can also go into single player, click on that, and it'll, it'll go in solo, nobody will be able to join me at this point, I can sit here and play with myself, I mean, by myself. Now, if I hit the escape key, I get this will pop up, and I can either resume game, or I can hit escape, go back to the main menu, and there we go, and exit game. So, if I want to package this up, all I got to do is now, I'll create a folder on my hard drive, and all I'm doing is, I want to create a new folder car thing and yeah. just gonna go into it and I'll move that out of the way everything here should be good to go so now I'm gonna go ahead and go to file package project Windows 64 bit and now I just need to find uh, that location that I just created that folder for and uh, that's car test, car thing. Select folder and show output log. You're going to see some green stuff and a lot of white, some red. Error, ignore it. It works just fine. Because we're not saving it for Apple computer. Because we don't like Apple computers. And we don't like Apple products in general. I didn't like Apple fucking pie. How about that? I'm just un-American. I use Android. Oh, the end of better? <laughs> Whatever. Google has a, a plant or facility 
not far from my house. They are supporting the community by providing jobs. What the hell has Apple done for my community? I don't really have a valid reason for hating Apple. I'm just being an asshole. Um, because I can. Because I'm American. I could hate something just because I don't like it and don't understand it. I, I just don't like Apple products because I don't like their... Um, I understand why they do it, but like for apps, if I want to publish an app that I made with UE4 on Android, I can do it, and usually within a short amount of time, it's up and usable. Um, but if I want to use it um, on an Apple product and put it on Apple's whatever store, um, yeah, it has to go through a much more stringent process. I, I, I at the time when I was looking into doing apps for Apple products. It was much more difficult to bring it to market than it was for an Android product, and I don't own any Apple products, nor will I ever, so I have no way of testing them to begin with. I have plenty of freaking Android phones laying around. If I brick one, then who cares? I got, you know, you know, phones that I don't use anymore that I can brick all day long. Plus, the, uh, the phone that I'm using right now is a relatively new version of, uh, Android and hell, it costs fifty-five bucks. Worst case scenario, if I brick that, I'm out fifty-five bucks. There's not much in this project. That's why I'm I'm doing this on stream here. But if you guys have questions, say so now because this stream is almost over. As soon as this finishes packaging, uh, I'll show you the next step of how I actually play it from. The, uh, the 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 packed version doing it this way is in a, in a development build this is not an actual pack it to ship it build because of the fact I don't have my own app ID for this product then yeah you can see yellow it says steam API is disabled it's not it works just fine since I don't have my own app ID on this I'm, I'm not able to and I can't do a full packaged build, full um, release build because of the way that the Steam architecture works um, it won't let me do it with that app ID so if you do it as a packaging build, it works all day long, I can share this just like with the, the TB4 pack sound that I put up on, on Discord um, for the City Studios um, projects you can jump in those play a multiplayer all day long just that everybody that's in that game or wants to join that game has to be in the same steam region that's just a steam thing also um, if you're outside that steam region all you have to do is just change your download region in steam that's relatively easy to do so this is just about done whenever you see this right here you know you're done it says build successful so that worked um, if you want to change your Steam region, go to my library. Yes, Subnautica, below zero. Pretty cool. Um, I actually need to play that here to see what they've done in the last couple patches. It's just kind of bug fixes, but yeah, still need to check it out. Um, all you have to do is go into your Steam settings and downloads and change your download region. I'm using Charlotte. You click on that and you can change it to whatever you want. Um, I've had people in Germany that have changed theirs to this, to Charlotte or New York or whatever, or Atlanta, and they have been able to join me in a project that I've, I've put out there. So this is done. I can actually close this, this project out. And Epic Launcher, I can close it. It no longer closes, it just minimizes. Thanks, Fartnite. What if I just want to close the whole damn launcher? Do it a different way. So, when you package a project like that, it's going to put it in a folder called Windows No Editor. So, the first thing I do is I open it up here, so I can see it on the left, and then I go into this Windows No Editor folder, I grab all the contents, I left-click, drag, and drop it back on the root folder, and now it puts everything in the root folder, and now I can delete the Windows No Editor folder, so now whenever I package this up and I right click on it and I say 
um, add to car thing dot rar. It's going to add it to a rar file with the name of the actual project folder you called it. I could have called it Cinti Cars, and it would have been that. Whatever you call that folder is going to be the name of the rar file. I can't tell you how many times someone sent something to me like that, and it, they sent me a project that was called Windows No Editor. I'm like, do please. Just take a few seconds. <laughs> but after you've done that, I mean, you don't have to package it up in a RAR file. I'm just saying this. Once you move it into the root folder, double-click on it. With my simple multiplayer Steam template, it's going to come up with that Windows firewall or whatever your firewall thing is. You're going to have to allow it through your firewall. You can do a single player, no problem, and it automatically goes full screen, which is kind of cool. Hit escape, go back to the main menu, and multiplayer, host, my damn car game. Make Now it's multiplayer. Anybody else who has this project downloaded can see that and join in and be able to drive around and, and there'll be much rejoicing. You can roll your car over and be stuck. <laughs> there you go. Again, hit escape, main menu, exit game, everything functions. Alrighty, if there are no more questions, hopefully that helped you out a little bit and you're able to, um, to get your cars working at least. And question the the packed up RAR file is something. Car thing, 122 megabytes. Not bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. If you got any questions, check in with me on Discord. Just make sure you check the the rules before you start posting, and damn sure don't use any mentions. Thank you. Um, all right, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you around.